Ooh, what's this? People said Avengers Infinity War was the most ambitious crossover ever, huh? So, Mr. Kamikaze and I were at this awesome Mexican place. They're right by where we're staying, so already we've had a few nachos, some salsa, and this spicy stuff. This stuff is amazing. Yeah. I haven't been here in 15 years, and it's just as good as I remember. Good shit. Killer. It is absolutely killer. So, um... So far today, in this epic crossover event we're doing, yeah. <laughs> quote unquote. So so far we've done recordings for uh, SmackDown, Here Comes Pain, NASCAR Thunder 04, figuring out what we're gonna try next. And I'm thinking, I mean, if I had to, we'll, we'll figure it out when we get back. But we might actually go for a nice uh, metal drive. Metal drive. That's what it is. Heavy a metal, metal drive. drive. Heavy metal, metal drive. Is good. That is if it's cool, of course. But yeah, I'm hoping so. I don't know. I'm cool with it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but uh, so far we're just enjoying our nachos. We'll be right back and we'll show you what we got for main courses. All right, so we've just been delivered our food. So Dylan, what did you get? So this was the combo, uh, three tacos, some rice it looks like, and I'm not sure what this is. I think that's beans, refried beans. Oh, that'll be it. Topped yeah. with cheese. Going for your first bite of beans. Oh, oh that's so good. <laughs> uh, yeah, it definitely looks good. Oh, you're going for the rice, rice now. now. Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. And then what I got, I got this big beef burrito that's just smothered in everything. So, uh, actually, if you want to, uh, real quick, Dylan, take, take hold of the camera roll. Because I'm about to go ham on this. These beans are so good. <laughs> mm. I can tell it's so fresh. Like you can taste everything. Wow. Really good burrito. And now, <laughs> yes, yeah, so now you get all of our stuff. So uh, we'll finish up and then we'll come back and give our final approval. I already approve. <laughs> Well, we just finished our food. Well, Dylan didn't quite finish all his. He still had rice and no, beans. but I could not. I'm pretty much done with mine. I managed to polish off that burrito. And I have to say, this was probably some of the best Mexican food I have ever, ever had. Yep, I ain't been here in 15 years, and it's better than I remember. <laughs> yeah. So, I guess a uh, review of this place, I give it a 9 out of 10. Mm. Maybe a 10 out of 10, if I'm going to be happy. Uh, there, I don't think there's any desserts Thank other than that. that. Other than that, it would be a 10 out of 10 if there were some desserts, but yeah. besides that, it's so good. Yeah, so uh, I guess uh, after we're done with this, we're going to head back to our cabin, and then we're going to see if we can do the metal car ride. And that's going to be an adventurous uh, video. Hopefully we don't get copyrighted. Well, I mean, probably will, but I ain't gonna give a shit. It will. Especially when we get Sodom playing. Yep. All right, so we'll see you after a bit. I'm not 50, I'm not 50. I don't know, I don't this, know shit, okay? this shit, okay? Mammals. For 200, please. Mammals, mammals. Well, well, I'm a mammal, I'm a mammal, so maybe okay. I have been having been having been been It's also this. called the white or ice bear. Polar, 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 polar. Oh, he's so, oh, cute. He's so cute. Oh, but this oh, was made, this was made, this was probably dad. So sad. Polar, polar. If I don't get this shit, I don't get this shit, I won't go on a rampage, I swear. Oh, regrettably, no. Are you fucking serious? Fucking serious. Are you fucking serious? Fucking serious. Six hundred. Answer: The Daily Double. If you would, Player Three.
Name calling Fuck for two thousand. Answer? Oh, you got the How about you eat a dick? Player three, could we have your wager now? I hope you choke on that $3,400. Okay, Nintendo immortalized this super first name of... Uh, what is Marino? No, bitch. sorry. <laughs> writer's life for me for 12 years. <laughs> this Maltese novel begins... <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I can't, I don't even know what's happening, Chad. The I can't, I can't. For, me for 1600. I don't even know what's happening, I'm not even, I can't, I can't. I don't know. What is the merchant of Venice? <laughs> That's it. What'll it be? <laughs> it takes two kids, dude. Oh my god. Writer's life for me for two hours. <laughs> this magazine's 1998 swimsuit issue was shot at locations around the world on oh the plate. Is it the ESPN swimsuit magazine? Sports that Illustrated. Sports Illustrated. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. <laughs> And in this round, I our am crying, chat. <laughs> under Decelene, this island nation proclaimed itself the <laughs> Black Republic. What is the Dominican Republic? Well, well, after we got done eating, we're on our car ride, and look at this fucking shit. Look at this bus. Where are you going, sir? <laughs> I rode the bus here when I was little, and the bus route doesn't even go up this road it's supposed to go around what are you doing sir this the, 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 oh this guy's behind me i'm getting tailgated by a motorcycle what is this <laughs> yeah i see Unreal. it yeah I, see him. I don't know if you guys can see it on the mirror or not but yeah uh, but yeah we've been kicking back listening to some metal and talking about what's all around spearfish considering you said you lived here for what three years i lived here for a year and a half oh, year. from uh third grade to uh fourth grade and then i came back for college for a year and a half so it's been three years yeah wow and what's cool is uh we were uh we were talking about we were driving down and we found the the P.O. box. We found yeah. the infamous P.O. box where you guys sent him the fan mail, where I sent him uh, Kill 'Em All. Um, actually, fun fact: uh, I haven't brought this up on video yet, but just before we left to eat, I gave Dylan a nice little present. And, it was a really nice present. And what was that present, sir? The sir? present that I got was a little-known CD by a small-time British band that you probably haven't heard of it's very obscure and it was uh, Screaming for Vengeance by Judas Priest so I really appreciated that big time yeah after all I had no use for it since I had another copy at home and uh, I don't know if I brought this story up I might have brought it up on stream before but like one time I go to oh shit There's we go bumps. yeah the bumps speed bumps mm -hmm. speed bumps <laughs> but I was talking about how I made an Amazon order a couple years ago, trying to get uh, Killing Machine and Sad Wings of Destiny. I got Sad Wings, but I didn't get Killing Machine. Instead, I got a second copy of Screaming, and I never opened it up. Just been hanging out on the CD shelf for years now. And I thought to myself, you know what? Since we're going on this trip, and I'm going to be meeting up with KG, why not give it to him? After all, I've given him a second copy of an album <laughs> that I already have, and I still feel like a complete and utter jackass because the story behind that, I was at Walmart with my mom helping her get stuff, and I saw Kill Mall was in the seven dollar rack, and I thought, and I thought I didn't have it. I go home, I already fucking had it. I'm like, what have I done? But hey, it's got good use with this guy. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm happy it went. I should have brought it with. Yeah, you probably should have. <laughs> but uh, regardless, yeah, we're just. Enjoying a nice little ride, jamming out some tunes, and then when we get back to the cabin, 
more recording to do, and I don't know if I'm going to have a voice by then. But Because that hot sauce from that Mexican place really got me going. That sauce was great. It was, it was really good. Yeah, quite. But killer. Quite killer. Quite killer. But, uh, yeah, we'll be back after this. We'll be back after these after messages. these messages. Whew. Man, I tell you guys, every time I work out now, my underarms smell like complete and utter garbage. Isn't there an invention out there that helps you get rid of odors under your armpits? Yes! Deodorant. It's a miracle worker. You put it under your fucking armpits. You get me? You fucking viking. Oh! Why, it's some speed stick. Ooh, that smells really, really nice. So you know what? I recommend Speed Stick Deodorant. It actually works. New Speed Stick Ultimate. Kills odor, protects guys. I can't. Every year, millions of young adults such as these find themselves falling into an irreversible state of disrepair. Drugs, alcohol, and all sorts of other things have torn their lives apart. But it's not too late. They can change, and so can you. Don't do drugs. Nitrogen pentoxide in CCL4 medium also exhibits first order kinetics plus Girls! Jag gai? Ab skin ko bhi jagai? Naya clean and clear morning energy mini. Iske soft bursting beats skin ko jagai instantly. Questions are morning energy face wash for rupees 20. Clean, clear and confident. Big doors, small doors. You want to buy a door? We'll sell your door. We only sell doors. We're door incorporated. We only sell doors. What the fuck is my life come to? Hey, JD, you, uh, you see my drink anywhere? I'll keep looking. Where does Carl Edwards get his power? Subway low-fat $5 footlongs like the tempting oven-roasted chicken or black forest ham. They fuel him up for amazing performances. Subway, eat fresh. Found it. You. you talking to me? Well, yeah, I'm talking to you. Shouldn't you be getting yourself some pancakes for breakfast or something? Oh, come on, Mrs. Buttersworth. I don't want to go through with this this morning. I'm too tired. I just want to eat a normal breakfast without gaining weight, all right? Oh, don't you dare tell me that you're cheating on me with that bitch Aunt Jemima again. Because I remember what happened last time. You took her into your room and you fucked her right in the pussy and I got so jealous. Now you are going to take your fat ass right over here in front of me so I can make you some fucking pancakes, you big fat bastard. Fuck this, I'm going back to school. Oh, don't you dare walk away from me. Don't you dare walk away from me. You do this every Mrs. Buttersworth. Half the taste, you twice the sass. We all know that they found Thick Boy at a, um, he was having his uh, weekly trip, or daily, or hourly, sorry, his hourly trip to, um, oh, that's not even close to what I was trying to kick it. Oh, man. Oh, no. So Thick Boy was on his hourly trip to Golden Corral. All you can eat. And the head coach for the Buccaneers just happened to be there at the same time. You know, he doesn't actually go to Golden Corral very often. It's because his mother was in town and his mother really likes Golden Corral. And he didn't want to be, you know, that guy. So, the Buccaneers head coach took his mom to Golden Corral, and that's when he laid his eyes upon Thick Boy for the first time. And 
he was like, I need that man on my football team. So he waited until the third round and was like, he pressed the button. And, and Thick Boy walked across the stage. He had, you know, during the NFL draft, you know, in the building, they had complimentary food. Well, he ate literally all of it. So he had cake crumbs on his face. He had barbecue sauce down his shirt. But he had a pristine, brand new 17XL jersey waiting for him at the stage. The Buccaneers head coach handed it to him. And Thick Boy almost ate the jersey. The, the coach had to step in at that point, just put, take, him, take him away from the... Uh, from the from the stand, so yeah. And uh, after the first game, um, Morton, the Buccaneers' first string kicker, sat um, Thick Boy down and was like, "All right, so here's the fundamentals of being a kicker." And he just laid out, laid it down, all very clear for Thick Boy. And. Unfortunately, Thick Boy was not paying attention. He was too distracted eating um, some Chipotle. So he wasn't actually paying attention to Morton. Very sad. So when the first game came and Thick Boy took the, took the field for the first time and he kicked the ball immediately to the sideline, Morton was there. He patted him on the back and said, It's all right. Just remember the fundamentals that I taught you. And Thick Boy was just standing there like, what? And Morton's like, yeah, the fundamentals. You know, all that stuff that I laid down in front of you. And Thick Boy was like, who cares? And he just stormed past him. And Morton was like, wow. That hurt him to his very core. Morton was very sad. And the next day, Thick Boy demanded a trade. And that's when he got sent off to the Saints. And when... Thick Boy was packing his bags in the Saint, in the uh, Buccaneers locker room. He found a note. And on that note, it said, you know, I know we've never seen eye to eye, but you have the greatest potential that I have ever seen out of a rookie kicker. Just follow your dreams. Keep doing your reps in practice, which is, you know, the offense doing in all, all streaks. And the defense doing a field goal block. Just pay attention. Pay attention that they're doing the field goal block on defense to help you, you know, understand what a field goal block is. We got another kick return touchdown. Let's go. Let's go. And the man who signed that note was Morton. The 48-year-old first string kicker for the Buccaneers. And Thick Boy at that moment realized that the opportunity that he missed out on. But it was too late to make amends with Morton. And off to the Saints he went. And this was back in 2008, so there were no, you know, smartphones. So he couldn't text Morton to tell him thank you. Unfortunately, it was all just... He had to keep that note close to his heart. And it was difficult to do that because of all the body fat between his heart and his skin. But he tried his best to keep that note as close to his heart as he possibly could. And then, after he went to the Saints, he started putting in the work. He started doing practice. His awareness shot up to 99. And he knew that he had to make Morton proud. And then finally, finally, the day came. And the Buccaneers faced off against the Saints. And the two met again for the first time in several months. And we all remember that game. It was in the previous stream. It was a back and forth game from start to finish. And both Morton and Thick Boy hit the field multiple times. And it was just a slugging match. A slugging match between two legendary kickers. But unfortunately for Thick Boy, the Buccaneers prevailed. And in the end, Morton was the better kicker of the day. Even though Thick Boy was perfect because he did not miss a field goal until this season. It just wasn't enough. The Saints just could not do it. 
But after the game, Thick Boy marched straight up to Morton and embraced him in a hug. Just the biggest hug that he's ever given in his entire life. All of the influence that Morton gave him, all of the mentorship, all of the love and compassion that he showed to Thick Boy as a rookie kicker. Just the biggest loving embrace that you've ever seen in your life. Unfortunately, Thick Boy did not understand his strength. And through all this embracing, Thick Boy actually managed to smother the life out of Morton. And he died in Thick Boy's hands. He could not take the thickness. It was the saddest day. Tears were streaming down Thick Boy's face as he realized what had happened. But in his dying breaths, Morton stared directly into his eyes, directly into Thick Boy's eyes. <laughs> and he told him, I know. I know what the potential that you have is. I know you didn't mean to strangle me with your hunk. Go, Thick Boy. Go be the greatest kicker. Go be the greatest kicker the NFL has ever seen. And that's when Thick Boy realized that that's exactly what he needed to do. So that's when he turned on 15 minute quarter lengths to make sure that he could kick as many field goals as he possibly could and become the greatest kicker in the history of the NFL. Da 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 da. Anyway, we lead 55 to 17. I don't know where this offense was through the entirety of the previous game that we played against the Colts, but I'm glad we're beating them now. We're, we're finally proving our worth against the, the Titans. We sucked against them in the first game. Is New series, Storytime with Kamikaze. Bruh, I have a playlist that's called Storytime with Kamikaze already. <laughs> this always happens without fail. Always, 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 always. It said that. It has said this for 15 minutes. And you know the best part about Windows 10 is? Once it does one, it usually turns off, turns back on, it does another! Another! The Browns were going for the fucking sweep. They didn't win a single preseason game either. They were on an 18 game losing streak, and that's just this year! That's just this year! Oh my fucking god! We lost to the fucking Browns! Fire everyone! Start over! Start over! Fire everyone! Pick up some fucking free agents! Anyone can play better than this! You lost to the fucking Browns! You had a field goal blocked in the fucking red zone of the Browns! Oh! Oh, 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 Merry fucking Christmas, San Diego. It can't possibly be that the store is closed. No, it must be a mistake. They really want my patron. So, I'm so fucking pissed off, can't you see? I'm shaking. This is road rage. This is road rage. Fuck. No, you piece of goddamn shit. <laughs> so what, Why can't you spring when I tell you to, you piece of fucking ass? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there he is. Oh. There's that. There we go. Oh, I'm about to eat that one. Oh, I'm fucking screwed him. What? <laughs> oh, my God. Doctor, doctor, give me the news. I got a bad case of wanting to fuck my own ass. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is fucking worthless. Didn't open it once. Paid 55 fucking dollars. I could have bought a considerably decent brand new video game for that money. I could have bought Fallout 4 for that money. I got 94 or so hours out of Fallout 4. 
Let me, let me tell you how many hours I got of this. <laughs> zero point zero! <laughs> worthless! Fucking worthless shit. Oh my god. We have a fucking customer who's pissed the fuck off because Expedia had to be a fucking dumb bitch and see that we had a room when we clearly did fucking not. We did not. No rooms. Zero. Zip. Zilch. Other Z words associated with zero. No rooms. But somehow it says that we had one. We didn't. We don't. And they have the fucking nerve to tell me, Oh, actually, you're the one who's wrong! Cause you gotta fucking call Expedia and tell them that you don't have- Go fuck your own ass! Are you gonna work? You fucking piece of dog shit, you gonna work? Huh? 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 Ah? Uh, ah? Uh. Oh! What is Marino? No Bitch. story. <laughs> Writer's life for me for twelve years. This small tease novel begins. <laughs> what the fuck? I only needed three points there. Three nines. I had three nines and three twos on the Unbelievable. Team. I had three sevens and a wild card, as well as three eights, two nines. I was there, dude. Uh, no. Uh, I can't believe it. It was a close battle, but I'm it is. bamboozled on this day. <laughs> I thought I had it. I was, I was feeling good. It was right there. I had it, and then I didn't have it. I'm so mad right now. I'm actually mad. I'm, I'm leaving. <laughs> nope. Nope. No. Well, I guess uh, he left me. So uh, thank you guys for watching Phase 10. Sad that we tried to get a camera up here, but it was not going to stay. So yeah, it is what it is. But anyways, I whooped his ass. Boo! Trash game! All right. I'm gonna miss you, man. I'm gonna miss you too. No. This is so sad.